you know, our first speaker, you guys know him. He's the CEO of, of the Blue Horizon Thailand. He's the guy who started Success Event. Came to Thailand 16 years ago with $100 in his pocket. Became homeless, life isn't so good in Phuket, Thailand, but somehow he managed to find a secret to success. And he's here today to tell you all about it. Ladies and gentlemen, to go up, CM Prop, Murray Gatana, Kapun, Andres Pira. Good morning, Thailand. I am absolutely honored and so happy to be able to stand here today in front of such amazing people. And if you're excited as I am, please say yes. yes. That was not strong enough. Please say yes. yes. That sounds better. I'm so happy that I can be on a stage here and share my life story and my principles of taking me from a beach in Thailand, being homeless, to the person I became today. And I'm an ordinary person like anyone else. And I want to let you know under this today is that it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter how you look or what financial background you have or how old you are. Nothing of that matters to take you from nothing to the top. All you need is mindset. All you need is control of your thoughts, control of your emotions. And that's all you're going to learn today from the most fantastic people in the world. I had a dream about 16 years ago. I read a book that uh, taught me these techniques. And uh, there was two people in this book that took me to my heart. And uh, those persons were Jack Canfield, Joe Vital. And I remember when I finished that book, I made a promise to myself. And I said, one day, I will meet these two people face to face. And I will thank them for how they changed my life and how they taught me the power of the mind and what you can do to achieve, be, do, or have anything you want. These two people are here today, and it's another great dream coming true to be able to say thank you to Jack and Joe for being here with me today. <laughs> and I want to take you back. When I was about 14 years old, I was a mess. I was a kid roaming the streets in I'm from Sweden, Stockholm, and I was living my life day by day. I thought that life just happens to you. You're not in control of anything that, that comes into your life. And I jumped out of school when I was 14 years old, and I thought that, well, this is my destiny. This is my life. Probably nothing is going to happen with me. I'm going to live like this with no education and nothing to my name. So. It took me four years roaming the streets of Stockholm with no kind of dreams, no goals, nothing in life. And uh, what I think would save my life is when I got my first job, and that was a telemarketing job when I turned 18. I hated that job, but at least I had a job. And I had to make about two to 300 phone calls a day, and working from 12 o'clock until 9 o'clock every single day. So that meant that every time I finished job, I had to come home late and all my friends and family and all that, they had to go to bed. So I started to get isolated. I started to get lonely. And uh, I started to get depressed. And something inside of me was telling me that you're better than this. Why don't you follow the dreams you have? What makes you happy? What do you want to see? Where, where do I want to see my life in five years? What can I do to change myself? And I knew that probably Sweden was not the country for me. I wanted to move somewhere. I wanted to be in a tropical paradise. I wanted to be in white sandy beaches. I want to have blue oceans and drink coconuts on the palm trees. But I didn't know what country it was going to be. And uh, having that telemarketing job, I started to become lazy. I started to, I started to come late. And finally, that day came when I got fired. And uh, probably that was a good thing, because I ended up in my home, depressed, alone, and also um, yeah, very sad inside, because I didn't really know what to do. And that same year, something tragic happened. My grandfather died, and I inherited $2,000. And that was my ticket out, because I didn't have any money on, onto me that, that time. 
And I remember getting that $2,000 from my father, and he said, this money that you got from your grandfather's debt, this is going to go to education. This is going to go to something that you can develop yourself on or stay in Sweden and try to find a new job. And I took that money and I spent my whole day in the evening looking at it and I said, what should I do with it? Should I educate myself, just try to find a new job? What should I do? Or should I take a leap of faith? Should I perhaps just use that funds that I have and just disappear, vanish, go from everything? So the following day I went to a travel agent and uh, I had that $2,000. I didn't know where, where this was going to bring me. And I started to look at these travel magazines and, and all these different countries and, and I was starting to dream my, my, my thoughts away. And Thailand looked so great. It looked so beautiful on pictures. It looked so awesomely nice with all these people and white oceans, white beach. Exactly what I, I was being visualizing since I was, uh, yeah, since many months back. And I asked the travel agent, well, where can, I, where can this money take me? Well, you can probably go to Thailand for that. And I said, well, let's do it. I, I, I'm going to fly. I'm going to disappear. I'm going to vanish. But it felt hard because I knew that that money was not supposed to be to disappear. And that following day, I had to do a phone call. And I remember calling my father, my mother, and I said, well, parents, I have something important I need to tell you. And can we please meet tonight and uh, talk about it? And of course, they didn't know what, what I was going to say and, and what's going to happen. So uh, I uh, met them around 6 o'clock in that evening in my mother's apartment. My father and mother are divorced, but I told them to come and see me that day. And I remember walking into that living room, and uh, I saw them just in front of me. And uh, my heart was pumping. I didn't feel, of course, I was nervous. I was supposed to leave. I was supposed to just disappear and start a new life to a country that I didn't know anything about. I didn't know the culture. I didn't know the language. And also just break away from everything that I had in my country. And uh, I sat them down in the sofa. They were looking at me. I said, well, son, what is it? I said, well, I have made a decision in my life, and I'm going to disappear. I'm going to go to another country, I'm going to start a new life, because I don't feel good here. I'm depressed, I'm alone, I don't have any future here, I don't have any, any education. I jumped out of school when I was 14. I want to try something new. I want to try my luck. Can you imagine how my father looked like when I said that? I still remember that expression in his face. And he said, son, have you gone mad? Are you absolutely crazy? Are you joking? You're not going anywhere. You're getting an education and you're staying right here. But something inside of me said, I need to take this step. Something inside of me said, take a leap of faith. See what's going to happen. Believe in yourself. And I remember that moment because my mother, had, she didn't say anything under that during that 10, 15 minute conversation. And I was trying to get some attention from her. And finally, she looked at me, and I looked at her, and my father was fuming and screaming in the living room. <laughs> and she looked at me and said, Andres, follow your dream. Do whatever feels right for you. And if it ever goes bad, I'm always here to welcome you back. She passed away six months ago. May her rest in peace. And uh, she was the only person that really believed in me. And that's very important to have people that believe in your dreams believe in what you can achieve, and also cheer you up and tell you to go for the things that you desire in life. So I uh, was leaving to Thailand then four days after, and I had my ticket. I was alone. I was terrified. I was going on an airplane, totally alone to a different country, all over the, to the other side of the world. And uh, finally, I ended up in Bangkok. Apparently, I had bought a ticket to Bangkok, but I didn't know that was, that was not where my white sandy beaches, my palm trees, and my blue oceans were. So I remember I stepped out of the airport, and all I could see was all these big buildings. I was like, whoa, I'm in a wrong country. <laughs> and after asking a few people, I said, well, I'm here, to, I'm here to see oceans. I'm here to see palm trees. I'm here to find a new life. Well, you're in a wrong city. <laughs> And I remember that I 
that moment I had one hundred dollars to my to my to my name in my pocket. And well, what should I do? Well, you can fly to Phuket. That's a nice place where you're going to have all these uh, uh, things that you desire. Well, wh what is the ticket? Well, the ticket was one hundred and fifty dollars, and I had hundred dollars left. So well, wh what am I going to do? I'm here totally alone, and I'm in the wrong city. Well, there is always the bus. So I remember my first bus ride in Thailand. It was about 14 hours. And that was the last money I actually had before I arrived to Phuket. But 14 hours later, I arrived in Phuket, and there was my oceans. There was my palm trees. There was my uh, white sandy beaches. At least I was finally in paradise. I felt good at that moment. There was many years that I didn't feel that feeling of relief or happiness. But also that feeling turned into worries pretty quick because I didn't have anything. I was here alone and I had $50 left. So I, ne I knew I needed to find a job. I had to find a job very quick because otherwise I, I pr probably had to call back and fly back to Sweden. So I started to ask around for different jobs in, in different hotels and I thought that, well, since I speak several languages, probably working in the hotel industry would be something for me. And uh, it only took two days before I landed my first job, and that was for a hotel, inviting tourists into the hotel, giving presentations about their, uh, about the accommodations and flights and all this. And at least I had a job, but I only was making about five to 10,000 baht a day, sorry, a month. And uh, that was enough to stay in us. I remember that very clearly, my first little room in Thailand. It was maybe not bigger than, 15 square meters, and I had a fan in the roof, and I was sleeping on a mattress on the floor. But at least I had, was in paradise. And uh, I still had the same mindset that life just happens to you. You're not in control of it. You just live day by day. I was still thinking the same. So that little money that I was making from my first job, I ended up spending it on parties and bars and being late out at night. and. I was just, well, I might live today because I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. That was what I was thinking every single day. I don't believe that anymore. And uh, I remember spending all this small little money that I got. After four months, I hadn't paid my rent in the Lalyra apartment. I could even not even afford to pay $3,000, 3000 baht a month for a smaller apartment in Thailand. And four months went by. And finally, I remember that morning, it was about 6 o'clock in the morning, I heard a big knock on my door. Bang, 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 bang. Whoa, no one has woken me up that early before. And uh, I opened the door, newly awaked, looked out, and when I saw, when I looked out there, I saw four policemen outside the door, standing there, and said, well, Andres, the landlord have called, you have not paid your rent for four months. So uh, we're here to throw you out. Well, f what should I do? Where should I go? That's not a problem. If you don't pay, you need to go out. So I remember they said, you have 10 minutes to leave your apartment. And I went in, I took all my bags and all that, and I didn't know really what to do. And that was the day I became homeless. And since I've been living in Thailand already for about one year, I already, I was in debt. Every person I knew, I was uh, owning the money. I could not call back home because I had my pride. And I thought, well, what should I do? Maybe I should just go down to the beach and think about my life and think about what I should I do. So I remember I had two bags and I had my towels and that was all. So I ended up in that beach that day and I was sitting down and I was so angry. I was blaming the world. I was blaming my job. I was blaming my parents. I was blaming everything around. It was everyone else's fault but not me. And that was something that I didn't understand at that moment. That same night, an insight came to me and said, well, how could this happen? Why am I here? Why am I homeless on a beach with no nothing to my name? And that's when I understood something, that all the decisions that I ever made in my life put me here. There's no one else's fault. You put yourself in this situation. That's why you're here. And that was something that changed inside of me. And I said, well, that same evening, I made a promise to myself, and I said, I will never, ever put myself in a situation like this again. 
Imagine how you feel being homeless on a beach, sleeping on the sand. And I remember it very clearly. I had my two bags as pillows, and I had my towels as blankets. That's where I was sleeping. And I was making sure to wake up 5 o'clock every day in the morning before all the tourists came down to the beach, because I didn't want to stay there and, and all them see me living on a bum like on a, on, on a beach. So one night became nine days. So I slept on the beaches of Thailand nine days. And I remember looking at the stars and feeling sorry for myself, trying to fall asleep. Some days I cried. Some days I, I felt horrible. And uh, I was just a mess. So after day four, I came up with an idea. Well, what should I do? Maybe I could call a friend and ask him for money. Maybe he can help me, at least so I can come up a feet again, I can get a shower, I can, uh, I can probably move into a room or something like that again. His name was Max, and I called him and said, Max, well, this is Andres. I haven't spoken with you for over a year. Um, I'm in a really bad situation. I'm homeless here in Thailand. I don't have anything to my name. I don't really know what to do. Can you please send me some money? And I understand him today because I haven't spoken with him for one year and I call out of the blue and ask him for money. So the first thing he said was, no, Andres, I don't have money and you haven't spoken for me for one year, so I'm not making too much. I can't send you money, but I can send you something else. Well, I will send you a book. Do you think I was happy when he said that? <laughs> Why should I do with a book? What should I do with a book? I need money, I need food, I need to move into an apartment. And uh, anyway, he sent that book as a PDF. I still had 20 baht in my pocket. And I went to the nearest internet shop and I printed out that book. And the title of that book was The Secret. That was my first, one of my first ever books that I ever read. And thinking about it, I said, well, I have all this time in the world. I'm alone on a beach. Instead of just feeling sorry for myself every single day, I might read and at least focus my mind on something else. And when I finished that book, I remember what I said, what I thought, there was, what a lot of crap. This doesn't work. What is this? Self-development, think about what you want to have and it's going to come to you. It's not going to work. But at least I said, I'm going to prove it wrong. I'm going to prove this book wrong. I'm going to do all these exercises that they tell me what to do. I'm going to control my mind as to tell me how to do it and control my emotions and prove this book wrong. That was the first thing I ever thought about it. And anyway, most people, when you ask them, what do you want in life or what's going to make you happy, most people don't really know that answer. And that's something very important that people need to ask themselves and ask themselves, what, what makes me happy? What, makes, what, what can I do for other people that would make me feel better? And uh, most people, they always start to tell you about things they don't want in life because that's all they focus about, right? And I, I learned something very quick that if you ever, ever want something in life, make sure you know exactly what you want. Because when you don't know what you want, you're never going to get anything. The mind is very, very powerful and it gives you everything you set your thoughts to if you just know how to control your thoughts and emotions. And uh, other people that I ask, what makes you happy? What would make you happy? And the first thing they said is, I want a million dollars. Okay. Would that make you happy? Or what would you do with that million dollars? And people are not specific enough. And I thought, if I'm going to do this exercise in this book, I might start small. Maybe something I believe I can have instead of thinking about having a million dollars or having that big house or having that car or having that success. And what this book teaches about is something we call visualizations. And when you visualize, you materialize. When you can calm your mind and be absolutely still and really focus on the things you want, make crystal clear pictures in your head of the things that you want to experience or the person you want to be or, or the things you want to have. When you make crystal clear pictures in your mind and you really believe that it's going to happen to you, they will always, always come if you never, ever give up. And I remember my first visualization on that beach was, OK, well, uh, let's start with something small. And since I didn't have money, I couldn't eat, I couldn't drink, and I was 
starting to visualize, let's see if this book works. I'm going to start thinking about a cup of coffee. I'm going to visualize a cup of coffee. Someone's going to come up to me on this, this beach, give me a cup of coffee. And I remember sitting on that beach, visualizing, thinking about that hot cup of coffee. I could feel the heat in my hands. I could smell it. I could see how good it tastes. And, that. and the following day, it took just one day, one of these jet ski people that you know in Thailand that has the jet ski operations, the parasailings and all these kind of things, he came up to me and he said, Hi, um, I've been seeing you sleeping on this beach for several days. I thought I would give you a cup of coffee. Wow, was that a coincidence? Or did I actually create that with the visualizations that this book was teaching me? I said, well, there's probably a coincidence. Let's try something else. And I remember my second visualization was to get a lunch because all I could eat was a 20 baht noodle soup out in the streets, that was all I could eat. So I needed a proper lunch, a nice lunch, a steak with some potatoes and a nice drink and all that. So I started to visualize how that tasted, how, how, that, how, how good it felt to really get a nice proper meal. So I did the same thing. I visualized on the beach, I calmed my mind, I closed my eyes, I started to think about this fantastic food that was gonna come to me. Two days later, I was walking on the beach walk on the way to my noodle soup shop where I always buy the noodle soup that I could afford. And I bumped into an old colleague. And uh, he came up to me and said, Andres, how are you? I haven't seen you for a while. Let me buy you a lunch. And then when I started, I realized that, wow, um, am I into something? Am I creating it with the images of my mind? Or is it just another coincidence? But I started to believe in something. I started to believe that, wow, that might, this might really work. And I started to be happy. And I said, well, if it works with a cup of coffee, if it works with a lunch, maybe it works with bigger things. And my third visualization was getting a job, getting a room, getting some, somewhere to stay again, and also getting, uh, be, being able to shower again and just feel good. Another three days passed by, that was on the ninth day. And I took action. Most people think that when you visualize something, when you have clear pictures in your mind, you cannot just sit on a sofa and wait for things to come to you. You need to take massive action. When you know what you want and you believe in it and you have your clear pictures in your mind, you have to go out there. You have to take that opportunity. Go and see people. Go and see other people that are already doing what you want. So I started to approach every single hotel, every single company that I could ever come across where I was living. And I landed a job because I was seeing myself having a job in my mind. And that first job I got was giving out brochures for a real estate company. I was still, I was in the sun. I was giving out the brochures. I was inviting people for real estate presentations. And I could even move into a room again. And that little room had a small little garden. I remember that outside, outside, my, outside that little apartment. And I continued doing the same thing over and over again. I started to visualize things. I started to write things down. What do I really want? What do I want to achieve? What do I want to have? Because I started to believe in the power of the mind that was, was this book was teaching me. And of course, what you will learn today is the same techniques from the amazing people that changed my life. And also, the foundations of how your life can be transformed with just the right thinking. I went from giving out these brochures in, uh, in that office, the real estate office, and then I was starting to look up to all these people in real estate that was making all this money. I was looking up to these sales agents. I was looking up to these developers, and I said, I want to be like them. And how do I do that? And something you're going to learn today that one of the quickest ways to success is to find someone else that already has what you want, and then you mimic them. Follow them, study them. What do they do? How do they talk? How do they dress? How do they act? And I started to look up to these sales agents and I started to mimic them. Even if I had to go and buy clothes at the local market, I tried to look like them. And um, I was still doing the same exercises, sitting in my room, visualizing, being a sales agent, selling properties, starting to make more money. 
And it took about six months be giving out the brochures. And uh, I remember that day, I, I, an English guy came by the office and they said, well, I would like to buy some properties, but I'm leaving today. So can I go and see something now? And of course, I was excited. I had another customer. And I went into the sales office. I spoke with my sales director and said, I have this Mr. Peter here who would like to have a property tour, and he, but he's leaving today. So what can we show him? And I remember they told me, well, all, all the sales agents, they are, they're occupied. We don't have anyone to, to take care of him. And I said, well, he wants to buy something. We need to do something. Well, I'm sorry, it's full. And then we had to go out again. But I remember I asked this Peter, I said, well, I'm sorry, we, we cannot help you today, but I can, I can take you my motorbike if you want. And I remember I had this old motorbike with gears that I had to drive, and he said, well, why not? I don't have anything to do today. And I only know two buildings that were selling property that day, and that's where I took him. I took the chance. And it ended up that it ended up he buying within two hours with me on a motorbike. That was my first sale, and I didn't know anything about properties and real estate. And of course, when I came back to the office, my sales director looked at me and said, how did you do that? We never had anyone sold a property on a motorbike before. <laughs> and he said, well, you might have a talent. You might uh, be able to sell, so we're going to give you a chance. We're going to promote you to a sales agent. And that was the day I was visualizing to become that sales agent. And that day came as I'd been thinking about it. I could see myself being that agent. And that's when I got promoted. They got me a car. They got me business cards. And I was so proud and I was so happy. I was finally coming somewhere into my life. And uh, from becoming a sales agent, it went pretty quick. I was still doing the same things. I was visualizing the next step. If I could be a sales agent with the images and the power of my mind, what can, what can the next step be? And the most important thing for any human being is to grow, is to grow because if you stay in the same cycle, the same will all over your life, you're not gonna feel good, you're gonna die inside. And it's always so important to have next step, next goals, next growth. Life is about growing. So well, what can I do after being a sales agent? Well, I, can, I would love to be a manager. That would be my next step. And I did the same, the same things, visualizing. I remember that little garden I had in my house. Every morning, I woke up in the morning, I sat, I sat on that chair outside the garden. It was always at the same place. It was, always, it was always on that corner with my little flowers, and I was sitting there every single morning, closing my eyes, meditating, picturing of what I want to become, who I want to be, and all these things because I knew it already worked. I started with a coffee, I started with a lunch, I got a job, I got promoted. And it was all because I was creating it in my head. And that's with everything in life. As soon as you think about something too very, very strong and believe in it, you will all also get it. And it didn't go more than eight months and I became the best sales agent in the company. I was selling the most properties, I was starting to make money. And of course, with that result, they promoted me to as a sales manager, so I became a manager over the team of nine sales agents over that company. So that was my next step, and of course, and I said, this really, really works. I'm going to teach other people to do it. I'm going to show them what, how they can also transform their life with just the right thinking. So I started to do all these courses. I started to do all these meditation, all and visualization uh, sessions with all my team that I was uh, taking care of, and they started to get fantastic results as well. And they started to believe it. They started to get uh, the things that they wanted. I told them to make goals. I told them to write things down that they want, put it on walls, put it on ceilings, put it on everywhere so you can see every single day whatever you want to achieve, be, do, or have in your life. And another year passed by, and what was my next job? I mean, I'm a sales manager now. And what can I do to evolve? What can I do to grow? Because I always wanted next step. I always wanted next step. I wanted to just grow and grow and grow. And I said, well, maybe I should open my own company because I was starting to make a bit of money. I was starting to save uh, the, the funds that I was doing from the commission, from the sales and all that. And it took another six months after that, and I started my first property real estate company that was Phuket Condos and Homes, a brokerage company selling properties, selling houses and villas all around Phuket Island. And 
it started to go fantastically well. I started to make money. I had my own company. I started to employ people. I had my first secretary. I had my first accountant, my first admin. And uh, it started to go well for at least one year. And then something happened. My results started to dip down. I started to sell less. I started to get more expenses. I started to, to just lose more and more of the money I have been saving. And one of my biggest mistakes in life is was I invested all the money that I was earning that time into the wrong things. I started to invest in big offices in wrong locations. I started to invest in the wrong people. And I was thinking, let's go for big offices so I can impress people when they're walking in, a lot of computers and all that. But the biggest mistake is whatever company you start, the most important thing is to have clients. If you don't have clients, you don't have sales. If you don't have sales, you don't have income. If you don't have income, you don't have anything, and your company is going to go bankrupt, which I did. So the first company I ever opened went bankrupt after a year because I couldn't pay all the expenses. And I remember that day telling my employees of, well, I'm sorry, I need to close the company. I cannot pay your salaries anymore. And that was one of my hardest moments also because they relied on me. They had family, they had friends, they, or they have kids they had to take care of. But what could I do? I, I failed. And I had to go back deep inside myself and ask myself, how did this happen? How, how could I lose everything that I have been built up again? What have I done wrong? And I realized that I have stopped doing the things that actually made me grow. I had stopped visualizing, I had stopped writing my goals, I had stopped believing in myself. All the things that took me from a beach to having my own company, I was so busy running the company, so I forgot the simple things that I knew worked. And I said, well, if that took me up there, I need to start doing it exactly the same again. And I started to visualize again, I started to write all my goals, I started to believe in myself. And I started to write every single thing, how I could go from here, being bankrupt, to something spectacular again. And I started to visualize all the thing again, and it didn't took, took very, very many months until I got a few sales uh, from old clients that I had from my database, and I started to make money again. And I said, well, this really, really works again. So I started to accumulate funds, I started to inv uh, get my money again, and I, and I knew that all the things that I did wrong, I could do it better, so I invested it in the other things. And from that company, it became a second company, and then a third company, and I said, well, now it's, I'm, I'm doing good again, what is the next step? What's the next step after this? I'm a company owner, I have my brokerage company, but I was admiring all this property developers in Thailand. I was looking at these magazines, I remember, these beautiful buildings everywhere. And uh, I said, one day I want to become a developer like them. I want to be recognized as someone that built something in Thailand. And I want to build houses. I want to make people happy. I want to give them a bit of paradise and give them a key and also be recognized for a good constructor and uh, developer. And uh, I started to visualize meeting investors or groups that would actually fund me because I didn't have the money to, to, to build any buildings or any houses or any villas. But I started to do the same things. I was picturing meeting wealthy people. I was picturing meeting investors that believed in me. And I started to see buildings that I wanted to, to build in my head. I started to visualize them. And it didn't take long until I actually met an investor group from Singapore. And they... Uh, they had bought about nine properties from me, from my brokerage company. I said, Andres, you've been doing fantastic. All the properties that you sold to me, to us, we have made money on. We've got a great investment. We've got good returns on it. And uh, why don't you build your own project? And that was the day I've been waiting for. So I said, well, I didn't know anything about building a project. But of course, I said, yes, let's do that. And uh, from that first development, it was a 19 villa pool, pool villa development that I built, and it was recognized as one of the best villa projects in Phuket. And from that on, it went on to another uh, condominium building um, from 200 units, and after that, 400 units. And then last year, we actually got recognized as one of the best developers in Thailand and Southeast Asia. And we won several awards for 
our latest developments and projects that were built. And all this happened under a 16-year period. I've been here 16 years now. And that is a little bit about my life story and how I ended up from a beach to standing here on stage. And there's a lot more things and principles that we're going to go through. Jack, Joe, Natalie Glebov are here also. Uh, look, look at a, also look at, she is uh, one of the top models in Thailand. She's very successful. Natalie Glebo is Miss Universe. And all these people, they have their own life stories. How did they become successful? How did they prepare themselves? How did they battle failures? How do they share uh, them up? How do they think? All these things they're going to go through with you today. And I want you all to please write as much as possible today. Make notes, because it's very important. When you listen, you only remember about 10% of what is going to be taught here today. But if you write things down, every single thing that you hear today, you're going to remember more than 50% of what happens. And I know that if you start using these principles that you're going to go through these next two days, I promise you, with the bottom of my heart, that you will experience some fantastic, fantastic results and you will see how beautiful life can be with just knowing how to control in your mind. We're going to take a little break, and then we're going to come back again. And uh, please prepare for a fantastic two days here together. And once again, I'll be back in a few minutes. Thank you. Let's give Andres a little break. I know it's a little bit chilly in here, so we need to warm up just a little bit before we go on. So team, if you are ready, let's do a little exercise, shall we? Team, let's go. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
มาได้ยินเส้นยืนสายนะครับตอนนี้เริ่มอุ่นเครื่องกันแล้วนะครับเมื่อกี้เราให้สปีกเกอร์คนแรกของเรานี่ได้เบรกนึงตอนนี้เขาพร้อมกันแล้ว so ladies and gentlemen please welcome back to the stage Andres Pira yeah can you put that slide on All right, I'm back. Need to take a little break. It's hot up here. Um, we're gonna go through. A, we're gonna go through a few principles that you're all gonna learn under these two days, and uh, hopefully I can get that slide on here if I get some help from that. And uh, I would like you all to take a piece of paper now and a pen, please. And I would all want you to write one single thing in the first slide, in the first paper you're holding your hand. And it's a simple question. It sounds like a simple question, but it's not. Most people don't really know how to answer that. So please go ahead and write what makes me happy. What makes me feel good? And then the next question, what do I really want? Please write those three questions. You don't need to answer them now, but I want you under these next two days to really think about it. It can be something you want to experience. It can be some person you want to meet. It's the certain job you want to have, or that certain car you want to drive, or that certain house you want to buy, whatever makes you happy. The beautiful thing about this world is that everyone wants different things. So there is so much abundance around us anyway, and everyone has different things that makes them happy. Some people they they are happy making paintings. Some people are happy to 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 be an athlete. So you need to find yourself and and please dig deep inside yourself and ask you this quest three question: What really makes me happy? What do I want to do in my life, and what do I want to experience? And this is the three things that you're going to be crystal clear after these two days, and we're going to make it happen together. So, first principle that it's one of the most important things is know what you want. Most people don't know that, and I love to ask that question, especially to my employees. Every time I have meetings and gatherings, and every time I have a new person joining the company. The first thing I ask them is, "What are your goals, and what makes you happy, and what do you really want?" And you know what? Most people don't know how to answer that. They start telling me about all the things that they don't want, and some people don't have that answer in them. So then, what you can do if you don't find these answers, then you take the other page on your hand now and start to write. Down all these things that you do not want. Do the opposite. Write down all the things that you don't want in life. It can be: I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be poor, or I don't want to. Whatever you don't want, write them down. I don't want to be sick, or whatever that you don't want that's going to make you feel bad. Please write them down if you can. Under this day, and that's a good exercise because when you do that, you can clearly see the things that you don't like in life. And you can clearly see the things that are not going to make you happy. And what worked for me, and what worked for many employees that we teach that to, when you have the list of all the things that you do not want, just use the other side of the paper and write the opposite. So, for instance, if you write, "I don't want to be poor," what's the opposite of that? I want to be wealthy, right? I don't want to be sick. If you write that, well, I want to be healthy, and I don't want to be alone. The opposite of that can be I want to have a relationship, and that's a great way of finding answers to yourself on what you want and what you don't want in life. 
and just write the opposite if you don't know really what you want first. This is a great exercise that we will teach you more about as well. And that's just the first step in writing goals. Second one is when you have done this list, you can take the whole day to them. It doesn't need to be now. Under this whole day in two days, as soon as you come up with something that you don't want in life, write it down. As soon as you find something that you do want in life, write it down. You have these two sheets now to use them under these two days. And we're going to develop these sheets. And you're going to come out here with very clear pictures and very clear desires of the things that you want to achieve for the rest of your life. And this is the simple exercise to start with now. But if it says, for instance, this is an example. If, you, if I don't want to be poor, I want to be wealthy, what can I do to start making more money? What is the next step? What's the action I need to take to be able to do that? What kind of job do I want to have? What, what, what would make me happy doing it? Because I really believe that to be really successful, you need to love what you do. And most people, they have a job. They, go, they, walk, they wake up in the morning. They, they, they don't feel good. They, 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 they feel stressed. Oh, I'm going to go to work again. They just. Many of you had that feeling, waking up in the morning and you just don't want to go to work, right? If that doesn't make you happy, find the things that make you happy. You should be able to wake up in the mornings, put your feet down after waking up and just being happy going to work. Because if you love what you do, the money, the wealth, and the, and, and, and the happiness will follow anyway. So, and it doesn't matter. Most people think that, well, to be happy, I need to have a job that makes me a lot of millions of dollars. And, and all that. that. That's not happiness either, and that's what we're going to teach as well. Life is balance. It's a wheel of life that we call it. If you, you can have all the money in the world, but you know, in my job, I meet so many investors, I meet so many rich people that have a lot of money, but you know what? They're, de they're not happy. They're depressed. They're not happy at all. So remember that. Money doesn't make you happy. It's the life around it. Money is just a tool that you can use, but if you don't have healthy relationships, you don't have family or friends, or you don't have social lives, and if you don't have, for instance, your health, or you don't, you're not growing in life, that's also something that's not going to take you up and be happy as well. So I call it the balance and the wheel of life. All these things should be uh, within yourselves, yeah? And also principle number three that took me from something where I am today is also never stop learning, never stop developing yourself. I'm spending maximum, you don't spend much time at all a day, but I spend 30 minutes a day developing myself. I read self-motivational books. I look at motivational videos. I read about all these fantastic people that have achieved massive, massive success. So, we live in a big lie in this world, and that's the school systems. They tell us that after we finish school, after we finish high school or university or whatever, that's the day we don't need to learn anything more. And that is so wrong. That's actually the day that you should start developing yourself, start to be yourself, and start to find out who am I, what do I really want, what do I really want to be, do, or have, and what's going to wake me up every day feeling happy Opening, opening my eyes and going to work and having passionate about it. And like I, talk, uh, like I said to you before, visualization is very important. So we're going to go through all these goals that, we, you, that you're starting to, to write down. And if you, for instance, if you're having, we have now different ones. So I'm going to ask someone in the audience if they can share something with me. Is it someone in the audience that would like to share a couple of the things that you wrote down on the paper already? Please go ahead and don't be shy. Otherwise, I have to pick out one of you. <laughs> Do we have a microphone? That beautiful girl over there. This one. <laughs> Tell us quickly, what have you wrote down on that piece of paper? All right. 
Hello, boss. Hello, Anna. <laughs> You're great. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Start with you. Um, I wrote that I want to leave um, my whole family together at the same place. Um, because they're all over the world, everywhere, <laughs> and want to make lots of money, more, more, and more every year, and um, travel a lot with my family um, to to share to share the happiness, the experiences, and um, what else? Just to give to give to people because. Um, to do more charities and things like this, because I think when we give, we we feel great. We have more motivation to do to do more stuff in life, uh, and actually, it makes us happy. If it makes us happy, it makes people around us happy as well. Very good. So that's that's what I think. That's what most important for me now, right Thank now. Thank you. Thank you. Give an an applause for that. And when also, what we're going to do is it's very important to share your goals, share your dreams, talk about them. Because most people are afraid to do that. They have all these desires, they have all these things in their head. I want to have that, I want to be that, I want to do that. But they don't talk about it. They don't tell other people about it. But do that. Tell other people about what you really want in life. Two things going to happen. Some people, they will share you up. They will say, go for it. You can do it. They will motivate you. And they, you will always get people, we call it the naysayers who's always going to tell you, well, that cannot be done. You cannot do that. You cannot do this. I don't believe that you can. You're crazy. But you know what? Every time I have people telling me that, it gives me motivation. It makes me stronger. I love when people tell me I cannot do this, I cannot do that, because then I just want to prove them wrong. And it gives me more actual mental powers to, to pursue them, because when you finally achieve them, then that's one of the most beautiful feelings that you can have, right? And going back to your question, Anna, you also said that you want to make more money, and that's what most, most people do. They say that I want to make more money, but that can be a bit vague because the universe, or whatever you want to call it up there, that gives you these powers, you need to be very, very specific. And a lot of people is the same. They always say, I want to make a lot of money, I want to be wealthy. But you need to be crystal clear of how much do you want to have. I mean, what is a lot of money? Is that thousand baht or is it one million baht or is it hundred million baht so whatever number you want to have also write it down I want you all to write it down how much do I want to make within the next 12 months whatever number you come up with please write it down but it needs to be something that you think is achievable don't write hundred million dollars within the next month because your subconscious mind will tell you that you can do it so write something that it's going to be hard, but it's possible. So please write down a number that you think that you will be able to get within the next 12 months. Don't worry about how it's going to happen. And that's the beautiful thing with the power of the mind and the visualizations and how strong it can be, because we don't need to know how that's going to happen. That's the beauty of it. And most people, they worry about it. How am I going to do that? How am I going to get that? I don't have that income. I don't have that job. How can I get this, all these things? And that's what stops most people in taking action. That's what stops most people in pursuing their dreams or getting their goals. But what I've learned is, don't worry about how it will happen. Just know that this is what I want. And I promise you that your mind, with the backup of the power of the universe, also, they, they will come to you. It will put events together. You will bump into people that has that information or that has that knowledge. You will stumble into a, a, events and stuff that will happen around you to just get the goals that you want. So never ever worry about how it's going to happen. Just know it will and believe in it and see it every single day. One exercise that helped me very, very much through, through my career is that everything, every time I wanted something, I had clear pictures in my mind, but I also had pictures on my walls. And I also made sticker notes, which helped me tremendously. So if I want to have a new TV, if I want to have a new car, I wanted to buy a new pair of shoes or whatever, everything I wrote down. And sometimes I went into Google and I found that pair of shoes, I found that TV, or I found that car I wanted to have, and I printed out those pictures. 
I printed it out and I remember sitting home and cutting these pictures out and I was starting to put them all over my house, all my ceilings, my walls and all that. And you know what happens when you do that? It becomes everything you want, you get it from another perspective. You see it clearly in front of you. This is what I want to pursue. And what the subconscious minds do is it sees all these things every single day when you pass by. It programs your mind. It tells you this is the things that you're pursuing. And sometimes you don't need to stand and look at these pictures. The subconscious mind sees everything, and it's one of the most powerful things in the universe. We have two things. We have the conscious mind, and we have the subconscious mind, right? And the conscious mind, as you know, is that talking voice that is talking inside your head all the time. And it's telling you what to do, or if you're if you're worried or your fear is that thing that always talks to you, and then you have the subconscious mind. And which one do you believe is more powerful? Of course, the subconscious mind in a supercomputer, you don't need to worry about how to breathe. You don't need to worry about how your blood system works or all this. It regulates everything. It works automatic. But you can actually program it with the right mindset with the right technique, with the right tools. And this is one of the other things. Always write your goals down. Cut pictures out. See them in front of you. Put it on your walls. See them every single morning. Myself, I always sleep with a pen and paper next to my bed. And I always write all the things that I want to do. And every single year, I write down 101 goals that I want to achieve during that 12 months. And every time I wake up in the morning, I look at those goals and I read them out loud. And every time I go to bed, I do the same. I start to read my goals again. I, 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 I repeat them, I see them out loud. And sometimes I put small pictures into those goals so I can see it clearly. And you know what, when you do this kind of exercise, it, it makes you feel great. And it's important to feel that you're already achieving them because when you start visualizing, when you start closing your eyes and you start believing in them, see it as you already have it. That is very important, see the end result. And when you do that, some amazing things will start to happen and you will see clear signs of how the universe works and how it starts to give it to you. And you don't need to write 101 goals. I mean, I started with 10 goals. And then after 10 goals, I developed myself to 20 goals and then 30 goals and now I write 101 goals every, every year. But please do that as well. All the things that you want to experience, all the things that you want to do, all the cities you want to visit, all these famous celebrities or whatever you want to do, please start writing these things down today and tomorrow and we'll start developing that. Yeah, can be whatever, but write as much as you can. And principle number five that I followed in my book is also, I think you all recognize yourself that sometimes you're walking around on the streets, you're home, you're doing something and you receive a great idea or you receive a great inspirational um, thought inside of you and it's like, wow, I want to do this. This is great. But most people, they don't take action. They forget about it. And then the following day, I think you all recognize yourself. The following day, you're thinking about, I remember that great thing I was thinking about, but I forgot what it was. <laughs> you all recognize that, right? So whenever you get inspirational ideas, when you have your goals out, you read them out loud, you're seeing your pictures, then it's important to take immediate action. Always take immediate action. And when you don't do that, when you procrastinate, you wait for next day or you wait for next day, then nothing's really going to happen and you forget all these great flashes of ideas that comes into you. So immediate action is what taught me to actually come somewhere. And all you also recognize yourself, all the things that you ever want to do, yeah, we actually never done it, we haven't taken action to do it. And because what most people are, when you get that fantastic inspirational idea, is you're afraid to fail, right? Most people are afraid to fail, to take that leap, to take that uh, the chance in your life. Well, I want to have that job, or I want to move to that country, or you want to have this or that. But we start to thinking about what other people will say if you fail. We start to be afraid of what other people will, will look at you or, or tell you that it's not possible and you don't want to fail. We're all afraid of failure. But what I learned is failures is actually one of the most greatest things that can happen. 
Now, today, I love failures because failures, you only fail if you quit. But if you never ever quit, you're always going to get what you want. Failures are only there to teach you, to harden you, to prepare you for that person that you want to become. So failures are actually just lessons. So remember that. Most people never start anything because they're afraid of failures. But if you ask every single successful person in this world, you will see that that's the ones who have failed the most in life. The more you fail, the more you learn. For me, failures, I see them as brick walls. Many times when you get an inspirational idea, you, you, there's something you want to achieve or be or do or have, and you take that step, you take that action, you start to pursue it, the first thing that happens is that you hit that wall. And that's the brick wall coming to you, that's failure. And what most people do when that happens is that they quit. They don't see a way around, but any wall, you can go under a wall, you can go over it, you can go left to it, you can go right. That's just something to teach you something because you have to become a certain person because before you get what you really, really desire. And these walls are only there to create that person until you get that success. So please remember that failures are great. They're just lessons. They're lessons in disguise. And also, see it clearly in your mind. Whatever you want to be, do, or have, you, it needs to be created in the mind at first. Nothing can ever be created if it's not created as images in your mind. So it's very, very important to always see that every single day. I'm going to go through some more principles after the break. And I'm also going to introduce you to a very good friend of mine. He has been a great role model, mentor, and we have become very good buddies. He helped me to overcome my fears to stay on stage and speaking in front of people. I remember when I met him the first time in, in Thailand, and he, I came to him and said, well, Joe, I'm, I'm, I'm very nervous. I'm going to talk all, in front of all these people, and I've never done that before what should I do? And he, and he told me, I'm nervous every time. Joe, you, you do this for a living. You've been, you travel all around the world. You talk in front of thousands of people. And he said, I'm always nervous. But nervousness is the same feeling, actually, as excitement. It depends on how you think about it. It's just a little switch of how, how you see it in your mind, right? So I'm going to welcome very soon Joe, one of my good friends, buddies, and mentors that have taught me almost everything that I, I know today about mindset and success. So I will have PK coming up first, and he will introduce you, and I'll be back very soon, everyone. Thank you. Big round of applause for Andres Pira. I love it. You only failed if you quit. I know. A lot to learn today. And it's really cold in this room. So ladies and gentlemen, let's pick the energy up a little bit. Team Nine Cup, let's dance one more time. Good afternoon, everyone. I know it's been a long day, and I'm happy that you're back for the second event. And before we continue with the last part of our two amazing days that we had together, we just have to get our energy levels up. So please stand up, everyone. And I'm going to ask you, are you feeling awesome? Yeah. And every time you do that, you need to clap your hands, right? So loosen up a little bit now before we end this day. And when I ask you, are you feeling awesome? Then you clap your hand and you say, yes! Are you feeling awesome? Yes. Are you feeling awesome? Yes. Are you feeling great? Yes. Great, shake up a little bit. Because sitting, sitting many hours, I know it can bring you down. So, are you feeling awesome? The last one. Yes! Okay, sit down. Uh, remember yesterday, I asked you all to fill in your papers, do you still have them with the goals, with the things you want to have, the things you want to achieve, or the things you want to experience in your life? Do you all have them? Did you fill something in yet?
good. I want you to be more specific today because this is what I do almost every single day when I write my goals and a lot of people don't, they write a goal but they're not specific enough and when you're not specific enough with your goals, it's very hard to get them because the universe doesn't say, if you say for instance, I want a car, then the universe will tell you, well, what kind of car is it? What kind of color is the car? What kind of brand is the car? How does it look like? How does it smell like? How does it look inside? All these things that you desire in life, you need to be very, very specific. Yesterday, I only told you to do the goals, but we're gonna be more specific today. And please take the paper and pen again. And I would like you to find, write five, five simple goals on that paper. You can change these goals later on, but this is an example of how it works and how you can make this into reality. Think of a city or think of a country that you would like to visit within the next 12 months and write it down. You done? And then after that, you put a date on the city you want to visit, and it needs to be before that certain day. So if it's, for instance, I want to visit Singapore, then you need to write, I will, I'm going to visit Singapore before this date. And please write it after that city or country you want to you wanna be in. And the next goal, just write something that you want to buy, that's something you want to own, that's something you want to have. It can be anything, it can be a car, it can be a certain clothes, it can be whatever you decide that would like to, that, that's going to make you happy. It can be any materialistic thing. Please write it down as a second goal. And you would do the same there as well. Then you write the date after that. I'm going to get this thing, if it's a car you want, I'm going to get this car before this date, and you put a date on it. And third goal, write, think of a person that you would like to meet can be a celebrity, can be a family member you haven't seen for a while, can be an old colleague or an old friend that you haven't seen for years or something. Write that person's name down. A person you want to see within the next whatever, can be 12 months, one year, put a date on it. Put the name on that person and put a date on it on when it's going to happen before that date. Next goal is, we all want to grow, we all want to develop, we all want to learn new things. Because as, 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 as long as we stop learning, I believe we start dying inside because nothing else is happening in our life. We're not learning anything new. We're trapped in that rat wheel, that I call it. That you're not it's coming out from your, from your comfort zone. So write a skill that you would like to learn within the next maybe 12 months or one year. It can be playing an instrument. It can be... Uh, learning how to sing or learning how to dance or a skill that you haven't developed yet that you would like to, to learn about. Just think about it and write that down. And it's the same there. If you want to learn how to sing, I'm going to learn how to be a good singer before 2018, before 20, 21st August 2018. Any date where you think it's possible to learn it. Don't put tomorrow because that's not believable. <laughs> And when you're done there, the fifth one is how much money would you like to see in your account? Write a number down and be specific. So if you want to make another $100,000 or $10,000 within a specific date, then write that down and put a date on it. I will have $10,000 before six months before April 2019. Whatever date you think is possible to achieve it. And remember what we spoke about yesterday, don't worry about how it will happen. It's not our job to know how it will happen. 
It's our mind that will attract it to us. So never worry about this part. And remember what Jack and Joe said yesterday, never be afraid to talk out loudly when you have some dreams and when you have some goals, share them with people, talk about them. And that's what I'm gonna ask. If it's someone here in the audience now that can please share with me those five things that I just spoke about. Is it anyone in the audience that would like to share this with the rest of the group? Because I will do a little bit of exercise with that person to be more specific. If someone wants to share those goals or any of these goals, please raise your hand. Excellent, can we get a microphone to her? Raise your hand. Okay. Hello. Hello. What's Hello. your name? Alejandra is my name. Very good. <laughs> Give her an applause for taking the courage to actually share her goals. <laughs> so let's start with the first one. What did you wrote as a city that you would like to visit? Yes. I would like to visit Mexico uh, before February 2019. Mexico? Yes. Before 2019. Great. Yes. Why do you want to visit that country? Because I've never been there, and um, I would really love to go there and okay. see what Mexico has. Mexico is a big country, so what city would that be in? Cancun, New Mexico. I, I, I would like to travel around in Mexico, okay. not only one city. Okay. But if you have to choose, let's say, two cities in that country, which, which cities would that be? Mm. Cancun, and uh, I don't know the name of it, but I have an a auntie who lives there. Uh, okay. And so I would like to visit her too. But I don't know, I don't remember the city that she lives okay. in. Okay. So that's a perfect example how it works when you make goals. We're not specific enough. So when we say we want to go to a country, well, what, ca well, what country and what city is it? Then be, be clear. I want to visit that city because of that. And when I visit that city, this is what, I do, what, what I'm going to do in that city. You need to start to develop yourself on that goal. For instance, what can you do in Cancun? What kind of, holi what kind of excursions do they have there? What kind of restaurants do they have there? So you make a whole travel and detailed plan of that goal and it becomes more real, right? You need to build it up in your mind at first. And that's when the universe also sees that and it tells you that, well, okay, you're specific, then it's so much more easier for, you, for me to give it to you. Because otherwise there's also confusion within it. It's very specific with details. It's the same with uh, another goal, for instance. Go on with the second, second goal. Yes. A thing, what, what was the thing you wrote down there? A new nice apartment with my boyfriend and his son. <laughs> That's a great goal. <laughs> okay, so then once again, how big is the apartment? L around uh, 65 uh, square, square. Square meters? Yes. Okay, how many bedrooms does it have? Three. Oh, Three. Two bedrooms and one living room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what colors are inside that, bed uh, th that apartment? Uh, I would like to have different colors depending on the room, so... What colors comes, comes into your mind when you think about a beautiful apartment? Uh, white, uh, green, beige, uh, brown, like the tree, uh, like tra, tree, wood. Wooden tree, wooden, yeah, 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 wood yeah. tree colors. <laughs> okay, and then like, wh what's the color of the furniture in that apartment? Uh, Let's say, look at, visualize the sofa. See that sofa in that living room. What color does that have? Yeah, like beige or gray. Choose one, because that's beige. confusion. Okay. <laughs> so you see what I'm trying to do? Everything they want in life will be specific. We have to be very specific, because everyone always say that. I want a million dollars. Well, what are you going to do when you get that million dollars? I want a new car. What kind of car is it? How does it look inside? What color is it? How does it smell? All these things are so important. And when you write these things down, they become so much clearer. You understand what I'm trying to say, right? So be very, very specific with all the goals that you want to have. 
And then after these five things, I'm going to take you to a visualization part that I've been doing for many, many years, and it's very powerful. And you will feel how your energy changes inside when you already see the things that you want to be, do, or have in your mind, and you can see that you already, uh, you already have them in your possession, right? So let's go to the third one. Someone else. Can someone else share some goal here? Please raise your hand. Give them a microphone, please. Hello. Hi. Hello. What's your name? Tracy. Give her an applaud. Thank you. Taking the courage to share her goals. So Choose any goal that you wrote down that you would like to talk about and share to the audience. It can be any of these five that I, that I just mentioned. Okay. My number two was to buy a, a country cottage. Say again. Uh, a, a country cottage. I would love to own a country cottage. A country college. Yeah. Cottage, like cottage, a house, cottage, a, a small okay. house. Excellent. So and I can have chooks. Where will that cottage be located? What city would you like to have that country? Mount country? Tambourine Great. on the Gold Coast, or near the Gold Coast in Australia. <laughs> okay, so now we start the same again. What's the color of the cottage from outside? It's white. It's white. How big is it? How many bedrooms is it there? It's got three bedrooms. Three it's bedrooms. got lots of linen, lots of linen lounges, linen curtains, chooks the in the backyard. <laughs> Great. What's the color of the kitchen? Kitchen's white. Everything is white. Everything's white. Excellent. What's the, the what's the color of the, the the all the furniture inside that cottage? All neutral. A little bit of green. Love green. Okay. Does it have a garden? Do it has you have, a garden. And how does the garden look like? It's got a veggie patch. Great. Lots of herbs. Lots of herbs. Any flowers in that garden, for instance? Cottage garden. Lots of flowers. Okay. What colors in that flowers? Pink, purple, lots of white, lavender. <laughs> Great. You see, once again, you can be so more specific with anything you go. Picture everything in colors. Picture everything in dimensions, how big it's mm -hmm. going to be. And also, because the more senses you use in any goals, the more senses you use in any visualizations, the stronger the attraction becomes. Mm -hmm. So use sound. How does it sound to be in that house? How does it smell to be in the house? How does it look to be in the house? Use all the senses that you can every time that you're visualizing a goal mm -hmm. or anything you want to experience because that becomes more powerful. Our senses are very, very strong, right? Mm -hmm. Any other goal that you want to share with us on, the, on that paper? Uh, learn the ukulele. <laughs> Learner. Yes, because it's a happy instrument. You know the ukulele, little. Ukulele. Yes. Okay, cool. I know it what that is. It sounds easy. <laughs> okay, so can you picture yourself the color of the ukulele? Turquoise. <laughs> okay, that's a great color for one. <laughs> um, can you see yourself playing it and being happy playing it? Yes. Can you can you see yes. the sounds in your head? How it's yes. gonna look like when you learn to do that? Yes, and I'm even singing. <laughs> okay, and sing. And singing. Great. Yeah. So all these things are very important. So anything that you wrote down on your five goals that I just put, mm -hmm. start to put under them all these things that we've been mm -hmm. talking about. Colors, smells, sounds, mm -hmm. size, all these things. Mm -hmm. Be specific. That's what most people don't get most in life because they're not specific enough. They create confusion with what they ask for. Mm. Take a minute and write it down all the things that I said, and you don't need to put all the colors on and all that, but at least put some more details on every goal that, I, that you wrote down on that paper. Take a minute and do that. Show me.
Okay, you done? You done? Excellent. And also, for me, this has been very important. In order to think big, start small. You remember what I told you about yesterday? My whole life story with visualization started with a cup of coffee. That's the first thing I started to visualize, that was someone is going to come down to the beach and offer me a cup of coffee, because I couldn't even have enough money to buy one. So I started to visualize how that coffee looked like, what color it had, how it smelled, how, 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 how the heat was, how was putting it to my hands when I was holding that cup of coffee. All these things, I was seeing it in my mind before one person came and offered to me on the beach. Yeah? That's another way to be specific. And what most people do wrong when they do the goal list, and if you, if you look at all the most successful people in the world, they're all doing this. They're all doing goals. They're all writing goals. They're all being specific of what they want to be, what they want to do, what they want to have, what they want to experience. That's the key to getting anything. And most people, they're not getting anything in life because they not really know what they want. But start writing this down. But the most critical mistake that most people do is to start to write all these massive goals. I want to have a million dollars. I want to have a big penthouse. I want to buy, buy a Ferrari. And all these things. And the first thing that happens when you start with that is that your subconscious mind is telling you, no, you can't have it because you don't believe in it yet, it's too big. So start with small goals. Most motivational speakers, they always tell you that. Think of that big million dollars, think about that thing. I'm sorry to say that, I don't believe that because you need to be, you need to get the evidence that it works first before you start having a belief that all these things with visualizations actually works and it's true, right? So when I do goals, when I do lists, I always blend my goal list with very small goals. So if I have, I told you yesterday, I wrote, a, I, I have a goal list of 101 goals that I write every single year. But many of these goals are very small things. One of the goals can be, I want to have this new pair of shoes, or and I put a picture on that, that, that new shoes I want to have. I want to buy a new TV, or I want to visit that next city next to mine. I want to experience that, uh, I want to test drive that car. Small goals are so important in any goal list. Why? Because when you reach small goals, it feels like you're moving forward. Does, does that make sense? So it's very important, and it's a great feeling every time I do it, because you feel proud of yourself, you get confidence when you take, take that pen and you scratch that little goal out from your list. Whatever it's a shoe, whatever it's a TV or a DVD, the small goal. But when you get them, you feel like, wow, I just crossed one of my goals out. And that's where confidence starts to build in. So small goals are very important with whatever you do. Remember that. So 101 goals is not hard to get if you put them with small goals around, right? But also make sure to blend in the bigger goals there. Bigger goals can have a longer time period. You can put a big goal that is going to be within the next three years. A new pair of shoes can be within a month. So be specific with that as well, all right? Now, I would like you to choose one item that you wrote down. It can be the city, it can be a thing, it can be the person that you wrote down on the paper. And I would like you all to just, for the moment, close your eyes. I'm going to take you to a visualization part that I've been doing for many, many years. Every time I, before I go to work, I go step out in my garden, I do this exercise, I visualize all the things that I want to have, be an experience, right? And what happens in the first, when you close your eyes, is that you start to get all these kind of different thoughts in your head. You know what I mean? They're coming from everywhere. It feels like we're not in control. And to be able to calm that and to be able to separate those thoughts coming out, and before you start visualizing, you need to calm your mind. You need to silence your mind. And how we can do that is very simple. We can use our breath. We count every time we breathe. So when you take a deep breath in, count to three, and hold that breath for three seconds. Try that, breathe in, and close your eyes. Hold it for three seconds, one, two, three, and then you blow out again. And then you do that again, breathe in, count to three, one, two, three, breathe out. One more time. Breathe in, one, two, three, breathe out. 
And you see what happens when you start doing that. You start focusing on just that, and you start stop thinking about other things. One more time, breathe in. One, two, three. Breathe out. And when you start to calm your mind, and you do have all these other thoughts, you're getting separated. Start to think about that thing that you wrote down. If it was a city, if it was a thing, if it was a person you wanted to meet, or if it was that amount that you wanted to have in your bank. See it clearly in your head now. See that you're experiencing it. See that it's already happening in your head. It needs to be like a movie, a video. It's not just an image. You're doing it. It's an emotional video in your head going on. How does it feel? Doesn't it feel great to already have it? Feel that happiness inside of you. Feel the proudness. You're proud that you have achieved that thing that you want to have. How does it look like? What colors does it have? How does it sound? And remember to feel so happy that it's already within your possession. It already feels great that you achieved a great goal. It's already yours, it's already happened. Hold that thought for a second. What do other people enjoying that thing with you? What are they saying? Are they laughing with you? Okay, you can open your eyes. How did that feel? How did I feel? Did it feel good? Yes. Exactly. And that was just a few seconds. The longer you do it, the better you're going to start feeling. And it's not just one thing. You need to do it. It's practice. It's like an Olympic, it's just like an athlete that takes an Olympic medal. He doesn't take it overnight. It takes many, many years for him to become a champion. And it is the same with power of visualizations. You need to practice it. You need to do it. But you will see some fantastic things happening to you when you do it every time. You become a calmer person. You don't get negative too often. You don't get worried too much. Your mind works better and all these things, it really empowers you. And I know that because I went from a cup of coffee doing that to imagining building hotels with over 700 rooms doing the same thing. And it's the same principle. And most people do it wrong because they say, okay, I'm gonna sit here for 30 minutes or 40 minutes and do it. But I started with a minute because it's, hard to keep that image and that video in your head because you start thinking about other things that's coming into you. So a lot of thoughts that we have all the time, right? But the more you do it, the more calm you become. So I started with a minute, then it became two minutes, and then five minutes, and then seven minutes. And then sometimes I could open my eyes and look at my watch and realize that, wow, I've been sitting here for 45 minutes, but it felt like five minutes. And it's a beautiful, beautiful, one of the most powerful things. Because when you do that, What's happening is that your mind has vibrations, and vibrations becomes emotions, and emotions becomes attraction. It's a three-step step, step to any creation. And what most people think is that it's your mind that attracts, but it's actually not true. The things that are attractive is your emotions. That's the where the magnetism, that's the where the magic starts. So let's say when you're negative or you're worried or you're sad, how did that start? How did that bad feeling that you feel here, how did that start? Because it started with a thought. It started with you thinking about something bad, right? And it's the same. And after a while you get to learn that if we can cut that negative thoughts before they become emotions, you actually stop the attraction. And then that attraction doesn't come back to you. And it's also a training, and it's also something that's going to make you feel a lot easier in calmness and not have these worries and negativities inside you. And the universe will deliver it to you, and don't worry about how long it will take before it happens. So this is a very, very, very important part. So please do it, and you will see that this magical thing will start to happen every time you do it in your garden or, or in your home. But try to be silent every time you do this exercise. Turn your phone off. Don't have people calling you. Do it when you have another 10 minutes in the morning. The best thing is to do it in the morning because that's when your whole day starts, right? And sometimes when you come back from home from work, you're tired, you, have, you, you need to go and 
meet your family or friends and all that you're occupied, but usually we can always wake up 10 minutes earlier before we go to work to do these things. And then the whole day you feel great because you already felt your whole body with great feelings of things that you want to have. So focus on the things that you want to have instead of doing this, instead of focusing on all the things that you don't have and feel bad about it. It's what we feel that attracts, it's not what we think, but it's all starts here, it's a three-part creation. Think, feel, attract. What we're gonna do the last hours, or we have another half an hour, I would like all of you please to, to be a bit interactive with me because we had a lot of two great days here and I would like you to do some Q&A with me. I would love to hear your opinions. I would like you to ask me questions or things that you're battling with or failures or whatever that you have in your mind, please ask me directly. I would love to answer all these questions. Can we do that? Excellent. So I guess it's me coming down to the aisle, guys. Anyone for Q&A, please raise your hand right there. It's chair. The gentleman right here. Mm. Go ahead, man. Stand up. Uh, hi. Chair. I sit. Uh, hi, Andra. My name is Rafa. Hey. A quick question. Sure. What is, what is your idea about the universe we live in? What is your idea about reality? Do we live in multiverse? Do we do quantum jumping? Uh, I can't is see it you. holographic? <laughs> Sorry, take that question again. Okay, what is your idea about the universe, reality we are in right now? Do we co-create it? Do we live in simulated reality? Is it all real? Do we create it? What is your idea? Multiverse? That's a very deep and profound question. This is the things I study and I love to read about them. And I don't think that no one can give you a certain exact answer. I can only give you what I believe in, right? And I believe that Actually, there is no reality. We create our reality with the images of our mind. And that is how the whole universe and the whole, the whole planets and all the things work. Is to give you a little example, I mean, if you look at that TV, it, it, was, it was created because someone thought about it. It was a thought at first, right? If you look at that chair, it was created because someone thought about it first. It was an image in a mind. And it's the same that anything that you that, that exist. I mean, you were, we were born because your father and mother were thinking about having a child. So everything happens because a mind was thinking about it first, and it's the same with visualizations. The universe needs our mind and it needs our emotions to be able to create reality. Like that exercise with Jack Canfield yesterday, for instance, with the hands, remember? Wasn't it pretty scary? that you could see that you can actually, your hands and your fingers can become longer, it's the same. Whatever you focus on and tell yourself, it comes out in reality. And I usually, to answer your question, I believe we're living in a parallel universe. We have a universe inside of us, and it's a mirror. So whatever happens inside of us shows outside of us later. So everything happens inside, and that's what other many people teach, that you should seek happiness outside. And I really don't believe that everything is inside of you first. So you're, you're a creator, we have that spark inside of us. And we create everything with what happens inside and with your images, and that's what becomes reality. And I know that for a fact, because I've been studying these 16 years and I've been doing it, and everything I put my mind to, everything I wanna have, everything I visualize, it comes to me. And it's not a belief anymore. It, it's an, I, I just know it, I know it, it, it works every single time. And it's pretty powerful. And even if I studied 16 years, there is so much more to learn. There is so much more to learn about it. And you should also do the same. Always, like one of my biggest principles, always develop yourself, always study, always find out who you are and all these kind of things. Every single day, spend 30 minutes. We all can do it. Like Jack Canfield said, no excuses. If you wanna be better, work on yourself. And also, you should always work more on yourself than you work on anyone else. So, was that an okay answer for you? Okay, All next right. one. Okay, okay. 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 Uh, so I've got two questions. Yeah. Uh, the first one is a request really to put you on the spot. So can I get 30 minutes of your time in the next one month? 
Uh, you need to talk to my PR agent and see if I can schedule because I travel a lot and see. But yes, I like to help people and do that if I'm available. But I'm here one day and I'm in London one day and Moscow one day. So please get your business card up here. We'll take it and then we'll send you. You can also go into the website, andrespira.com, and you can schedule appointment or schedule training courses. Yes, you can. So okay. do that and we'll go back to you, yeah? Excellent. Uh, second question is uh, a lot of what we've been speaking about is uh, kind of one-to-one -one personal development, right? Um, how would, I guess you do do it, how do you bring this into your business across like uh, your second level management and third level management? How to make sure the principles are actually filtering down to... Speak a bit louder so I can hear you, yeah, sorry. How, how can we use these principles in a company setting. So you do, do you do these exercises with the staff daily? Like you bring them into a meeting room? With and the, you say, you mean with the employees, with the staff and yeah, all this? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I do this every single year with them. We attend seminars. I fly them out to, to, to countries. I put them in seminars with famous people. We wake up in the we, uh, we have We hold Monday meetings. We do visualizations. We do goal lists. We do all these things. That is what I tell my staff to do. And every time a new staff starts in my company, the first thing I tell them is to do exactly that. What is your goals? What is your dreams? What do you want and all that? And then I help them to fulfill those dreams because as a leader, you can lead, with two, you can lead in two ways. And you can see that we have leaders that lead with fear. They make all their employees and staff fear them, right? And they can achieve great results within a, uh, a small period of time. But what happens afterwards is that it gets too long, it gets too much, and they quit. But if you inspire other people and you help them to achieve their goals and get the things that they want and understand how, much, how powerful the mind can be, they're going to stay with you forever. So you can lead with fear or you can lead with inspiration. I believe in the second part. And of course I do that with my staff. And when I see that, when I see that they don't come from anything and they become something, they buy their new house, they buy the new car, that's what makes me very happy. So of course, it's very important. Empower as many people as possible. And I told you that yesterday. If you want massive success, make other people become successful. And the universe will see that. And it will say, that person, he's helping so many people get it more successful. Let's give him more of that. That's how it works. Does that answer your question? Next one. Now, Andres, I gotta say that we have we have time for maybe two more. That's it. Before Room Thirty Nine can take the stage. Okay. If that's okay. Sure. Yes. Hello. I have a question. Uh, <clears throat> they say that the first years of your life is the most formative years, and it affects how you react on life and how you deal with different situations. Uh, uh, how do you? How can you change those type of behaviors and? Um, develop yourself from your, uh, how do you say, natural instincts? That's a great question, and, and what I call that limiting beliefs. We grow up with a certain belief about certain things, right? And you also have to realize that when we get born, and after we start kindergarten, we have a kindergarten teacher telling us what to do and not to do. This is good and this is bad. This is how you should react. This is what you should say. This is how you, you should eat and all that. And then you start in school, and then you get teachers telling you what to do. You should not do this, you should not do that. You should talk like this, and you should behave like that. You should think like that. And then after that, you have your parents telling you the same. And then after that, you get a job, and then you get a, uh, you, you get a manager, or you get, you get a boss telling you exactly the same. Don't do this, don't do that. Think like this, think like that. So all our life, we have been programmed into believing in what other people think is right. And that's when we get trapped in our mental wheel, right? And that's the limiting beliefs that you have been put in all your life because people are having telling you what you should feel about things or what you should do about things. But you can change them and that's why we should go inside ourselves and change that belief. And those beliefs is in your subconscious mind. And like I said, we can program our subconscious mind and take off those beliefs with exercises like visualizations and asking yourself what makes me happy. And how can I change that belief? Why am I afraid of that? You need to really self-talk. It's also one of the most important things that you can do. We live in a very hectic world. We never had time for ourselves. We're always working. We're always on Facebook or Instagram, or we're always reading something. We're always with friends. We're all going out. But how many times do you actually spend quality time with yourself? 
And that's one of my biggest principles also. You can never really learn who you are if you don't spend time with yourself. But most people don't do that because they're afraid to be alone. But when you love being with yourself and talking to yourself and telling you all these questions, you will see that amazing answer will come out. And it's like talking to your soul. There is something inside of you. It's not that voice that is talking into your head that we call the conscious mind. There is a deeper voice inside that actually can give you those answers. So the most important thing, because I don't know what limiting beliefs you have, but you can find out by doing exactly that. So please do that. Spend the time alone. That's why I love being in mountains. I love being an adventure. I love being inside, deep inside jungles. I love climbing mountains all over the world. I do that because then I'm away from phones, I'm away from emails, I'm away from facts. Even if I want to call someone, I can because there's no connection up there. And that's when I can spend time alone. And my biggest inspirations to all my projects that I built and, and all the, the architectural things and all the, the pictures, how everything I want to create, they come in those moments when I'm alone, when I'm not with anyone, when I'm still, when I'm silent. And it's fantastic. You should also try it. And if you don't have the time to do it, even if you're living in a big city, you can be alone just in your apartment, in your living room, close everything down, close your phone, be with yourself and talk with yourself. We often don't do that. But like I said, you're the most important part in anything in life. But talk with yourself and spend time alone. That's one of my biggest chapters in the book also, how to do that. OK, last question. All right, let's go. Last question. Yeah, yeah, sure. Hi, Andres. Yeah. I'm here. Yes. <laughs> I feel honored to meet you today. So Say again? I feel honored to meet you today. No worries. Thank you for coming. Yep. So what inspired you to do the world best event? It's very obvious why I'm doing it. It's not, it's not about funds. It's not about money. It's about giving back of the things that I learned that I know works. So I love doing that. I love empower other people. And like I said on the gala dinner, Yes, yesterday. I don't want to be remembered as that person that made all these billions of dollars or had that cars and have that houses and, and have all this wealth. Yes, I have it, but that's not the person I want to be remembered as when my, my days pass by. I want to be remembered as a person that helped other people grow, that made them to inspire them and just show them if I can do, if I can come to a country which cannot even talk the language, I don't know the culture. I don't know anything about it. I don't have a high school education. I jumped out of school when I was 14. If I can use these principles and create what I created today, everyone here can. You just have to do them. But you have to be obsessed about it, and you have to really go in for it and study it. It's not going to happen overnight. But like I said, when I'm 60, 70 years old, I don't know how, how long I'm going to be here. When I close my eyes, I want to remember all these people that I changed. I'm not going to remember all the houses and all the money I had and all that. That's not important. And you know what? You already motivate me a lot, and I believe that you motivate a lot of people in here, and a lot of people know you. Thank you so much, Andy. Thank you, Fum. I wish I could be here longer, guys. And um, when is the next event? The next event, we're planning to hold it around April and May, but we will uh, be back with you on the exact dates. We're planning it now. And once again, thank you so much for coming. I really hope that you got something of it from these two days, and it's an honor to have people like you in front of me, and hopefully that anything that I've been telling you today can change you to be something better, or you can have or be and believe in yourself, yeah? So thank you so much for having me today here, yeah? Thank you. Big round of applause for the creator of Success Events. Andres, well, well Thank done, you. sir. Thank you. Thank you for always giving. I Thank love you. that. Think big and always start small. We're just going to take a little break. We're going to let the band set up. For the international folks, let me tell you, this is one of the, the hottest band, and they played live so good. And the lead singer, super handsome. That's all I'm going to say. So just a little break. We'll be right back. About 15 minutes with Room 39.